How does the divine reproduce itself? All right, that is the question for number 135 on the list of the 144 fractal faculties of the Tree of Life. If you'd like me to send you a free copy of all 144 of the fractal faculties uh, in abstract form, just uh, leave your name and email in the uh, comment section. I'll send it out to you for free. Uh, you can also watch my video called Tree of Life and Introduction over on YouTube. Uh, it's about a 10 minute video and it should get you up to speed to be able to follow along with all the videos in this series. You can also uh, go a little bit deeper and buy my book that's called uh, The Mass Tree. And that is also an introduction, but a much uh, deeper uh, 65 pages or so. Uh, 10 bucks uh, to my Venmo or Cash App listed in the description and I'll send you out that book. All right, today we're looking at number 135 and you can see the tree here. Basically for the purposes of this presentation, the tree of life is a map of our consciousness and each one of the circles or spheres on the tree is an aspect of our consciousness or a faculty of our consciousness, an ability of our consciousness, a potential of our consciousness. And there are 12 of them. They're numbered from 10 to zero. And then there's also an abyss right here, uh, which is an implied sphere that's not numbered. So there are 12 total uh, faculties of consciousness, 12 major faculties of consciousness on the tree of life. And today when we're looking at number 135, we are up here in the zero, the zero sphere. And this is above the tree and the zero sphere corresponds uh, to zero, to nothing, to nothingness. Uh, it is a complete mystery. It's the mystery of the universe where we can learn everything about all of these spheres, have them all mastered, but still ultimately it's a mystery. Uh, the origin, if any, of the universe is a, is a mystery. Uh, there are certain things that we just cannot uh, penetrate uh, because they are things that are outside the universe. Uh, the zero sphere is not part of the universe, whereas the first sphere is everything. The first thing is the all, and it is the higher self that is at the center of everything. It's omnipresent, the first sphere. It's all everywhere at once. The zero sphere is the opposite. It is nowhere. It is uh, nowhere, never. It is not part of the universe and it is um you know what was there before the universe was around or if any um we don't know it's a mystery it's something that's not part of the universe uh we can think of it as the first sphere being the creator of the universe or the all and the zero sphere is also the creator of the universe but it's the part of the creator of the universe that is not part of the universe. So it is what the creator reserves for itself. It is the private life of the creator or the, you know, uh, secret life of the creator uh, where the, the universe is just the creator's day job. And that's what we, that's what we know about. That's our universe. But then there's another part of the creator's existence that we don't know anything about. And that's the zero sphere. We can have indirect access to it because it's, uh, it's really the zeroth ether. Both of the first sphere, first sphere and the zero sphere are ethers. They're underlying or subsisting uh, realities. The first one is uh, at our deepest center 
and the second one, the zeroth one, is beyond that. Um, we can think of it also in terms of, uh, you know, lack of experience. Um, you can think of it like non-REM sleep. When we are in deep sleep, uh, we don't experience it. It's, um, it, it's just, we're gone. We're out, you know. But when we wake up from that sleep, it refreshes us. It replenishes us. It makes us feel good. We say, oh, wow, that was a deep sleep. I feel great now. Um, but we didn't experience it. We were out. Okay, so that's, that's one way to think of it, too. So basically, whenever we're trying to think about the zero sphere, we need to use like indirect means and analogies and things like that. Okay, now, so the, the zero sphere is where we're located here. It is one of our 12 faculties of consciousness. But we're talking about the 144 fractal faculties of consciousness. So to get from 12 to 144, what we're graphically doing is we're taking the whole tree and we're shrinking it down to the size of just one sphere. And we're superimposing the whole tree onto each sphere, uh, thereby breaking down each sphere into its 12 parts. Each one of the spheres can be broken down to another level of resolution. Uh, it can be broken down to infinite levels of resolution, but that, that gets altogether too complicated. So we're just going to go to the first step where we break down each one of the spheres into its 12 parts, 12 here, 12 here, 12 here, and so on, all the way up, uh, which is, adds up to 144 fractal faculties or fractional faculties or mini faculties of consciousness. And so today for number 135, what we're really looking at is we're looking at the greater aspect of the zero sphere, but within that zero sphere, there's a tree and that tree correspond, uh, number 135 corresponds to the second fractal within that greater zero sphere. Um, now, I just wanted to mention that, uh, you know, a lot of this analysis borrows from the uh, ancient scholastic uh, Latin uh, quadrivium curriculum. They, uh, you know, in the, in the, uh, the Latin, they had um, the trivium and the quadrivium. The trivium is three subjects, uh, and that's the minor vehicle. And then the quadrivium is four subjects, and that's the major teachings. So the trivium is logic, rhetoric, and grammar, uh, the liberal arts kind of thing. And then the quadrivium is um, music, astron astronomy, geometry, and arithmetic. And in that order, that's really what we're talking about. The third sphere is the music. And this also includes the, the esoteric aspect of it. So music and sacred music. And then we have astronomy and its uh, esoteric aspect, astrology. And then we have geometry and its esoteric aspect, sacred geometry. And then we have uh, arithmetic and its sacred aspect, numerology or harmonics. Uh, so we're talking about the zero sphere has to do with arithmetic or numbers and numerology or uh, harmonics. And so each one of these different spheres is, uh, each one of these different fractals within the zero sphere, it really corresponds to the corresponding number. So here we're at the second sphere. So a lot of things have to do with two. Uh, but also, the second sphere corresponds to uh, omniscience or wisdom, all-knowing or wisdom. All three of these 
These are our divine faculties, omnipotence, all-powerful, omniscient, all-knowing, and omnipresent, all present everywhere at once. So we're looking at this. This is our ability to uh, solve problems. Not only all the problems in our life, but other people's problems, we can propose solutions to them. And then also we can even anticipate future problems and avoid them entirely by being able to see them before they even arise and solve them. So uh, now that can, that can be done either through being able to shut the mind down, shut it off, um, or to be able to use a surrogate which is like a deck, a tarot deck, or drawing lots, or some other random chance process that's tuned into um, solving problems. Okay, now, so what we're really doing is we're imagining this second sphere aspect to be grafted onto this zero sphere um, a background. And that's what... Uh, that's what we get when we uh, to do number 135. It's called Two Divine Dividends. Stage number 135 is about how one makes two and three simultaneously. One is like a box. With no box, there's nothing. But once you have a box, you have both the inside of the box and the outside of the box. And the box itself as the boundary. So unity is automatically trinity. We end up with one and two inverses and their powers that multiply to one. Or you could think of them as adding to one. The, po the powers of the golden ratio and their inverses create this stairway to heaven. By dividing one harmoniously with the first two powers of the golden ratio of Memphis, Egypt, we end up with one over phi, uh, approximately 0.618, and one over phi squared, uh, approximately 0.382. Together they add up to one. Uh, so we have two uh, of the same things, but at different powers, but they both resolve to one. Their inverses, 1.618 and 2.618, differ by this same one. And, um, you know, when you multiply the 1.618 and the 0.618, you get one. When you multiply the 2.618 and the 0.382, you also get 1. Their difference is the next power, uh, 1 over phi to the third power. And their product is also um, 1 over phi to the third power. Their inverses add up to phi to the third power. And their inverses multiply to the same number, one uh, to phi to the third power, which is 4.236, which is also the square root of 5 plus 2. Uh, their sum is uh, 1 over 5. And their inverses, uh, we said that their product is uh, phi to the third power. Um, their, their inverses, uh, when you subtract them, you get one. So we're still all, always just dealing with phi and its powers and one. Those are the only uh, numbers that are coming in here. Uh, these are the second and third entities, these two divine dividends. Uh, we use two and three to represent them on the tree. They are space and equivalent space, which is how we see time. 
So we cannot see time, we only see space. The way that we perceive time is by looking at its equivalent in space because space and time are reciprocals of each other. And so uh, even though we can't see space, we can, uh, we can still reckon it through equivalent space. But equivalent space is a second power relation in the same way that 1 over phi squared is a second power relation. The golden ratio is transcendental. It comes from a higher dimension, such as the zero sphere. It is infinite and infinitesimal on our scales uh, forever. For these same Egyptians, there is a two by four double square called the Agdod, which embeds phi uh, as the hypotenuse, uh, hypotenuse of a two by one triangle, or really two by four, either way. Um, and it stands behind the primary bifurcations, the energy matter polarity and the consciousness will polarity. The Agdod stands for no things, no movement, no light, and no space-time. On the energy matter side, and on the consciousness will side, it stands for consciousness has no things, consciousness has no emotions, absolute darkness, and eternity. Consciousness has absolute darkness and eternity. These are the characteristics of nothingness as we see it, meaning they are not in our universe. There is no nothing in the, uni in the universe. They are infinite in their nothingness. When we turn all these inside out, then we get the universe. We get the divine dividends of two and three, but their transcendental counterparts are their origin. Okay, that is the second fractal of the zero sphere. Number 135, two divine dividends. And, um, that wraps that up for right now. Uh, we'll have more to say about that in, as we talk about uh, not only the golden ratio, uh, but also um, the uh, quantum arithmetic. And uh, those will be subjects that will be covered uh, in future, future lessons. Now, again, if you'd like to get that free copy of the 144 Fractal Faculties of the Tree of Life, just leave your name and email in the comment section, and I'll send that out to you for free. Uh, you can pay for a t uh, $10 on, to my Cash App or Venmo to get my book called The Mass Tree, and I will send that to you if you uh, send that to my Venmo or Cash App listed in the description. You can also donate to me directly through Cash App and Venmo, if you feel uh, in the uh, holiday spirit. And um, otherwise, stay tuned, because uh, number 136 on this list will be coming out tomorrow, and we have uh, plenty more uh, stuff in the offing um, for future lessons that I'm working on. So, you know, once we get this groundwork laid with the tree of life, then hopefully we can take off with, uh, you know, many other subjects. The tree of life, uh, for, for, for my purposes, is the foundation. Um, because if you can really get the tree of life, it, it helps you put all the other stuff into perspective. It helps you to be able to remember all the other stuff. It gives you a kind of a, uh, um, a place to put those things so that you can remember them. A categorization, uh, like a filing system, where you can put those 
all these other teachings and uh, it helps you to be able to remember them, to prioritize them, um, you know, to put them into perspective, into context, um, and to be able to see how one relates to another. All right. Well, thanks for tuning in today. Have a great day. We hope to see you soon.